Voices on both sides of the aisle have been calling out for immigration reform in the short term and also for long term cases, pathways to residency and so on. Just how significant is what President Biden has announced? Well, thanks for having me, Katrina. I mean, I think as we heard on the sound bites there today, this is one of the most significant immigration reliefs that we have seen definitely since um, DACA. So it is very significant for people who are going to benefit um, from these policies that were announced today. Now, the White House says about half a million people who are in the US illegally married to US citizens. What is life like for them currently? You deal with a lot of them in your course of work. Yeah, I do. And I mean, our phone was ringing today by people with the hope that they might be able to qualify for this. I mean, I think it's important when we're thinking about these policies to think about the people that can benefit from them. I mean, it is limited to, you know, at least the first policy is limited to spouses of U.S. citizens who have been in the U.S. for a significant period of time. Um, the requirements are that they have been here for 10 years, but the data that we saw um, actually says that majority of people who will qualify for this have been in the US for 23 years. Um, and I mean, I was just thinking, what has, what, how much has my life changed in 23 years or any of our lives changed, right? These people have been stuck in this limbo here where um, so much has changed in the world and they have family outside the US that they have not been able to see. And so they've just been stuck here. And I think that for people who can benefit from them, it, it is truly life changing for them. Will applying for this new policy, Fiona, be perceived to be risky for them or be a welcome development? I think the important thing to point out is that um, there is a misconception, I think, of uh, lots of things in relation to the immigration system. But a lot of people think if you're married to a U.S. citizen that you can apply for a green card um, and you may be able to apply, but you may not be able to complete the process in the U.S. And this policy is going to impact people who did not make a lawful entry. So we're here undocumented and are not able to adjust their status to green card here in the U.S. Um, so otherwise, those people would have to leave the US for an extended period of time and be separated from their families. So with any legal, you know, thing that you're going to be applying for, you do need to make sure that you get a screening from an attorney, from a qualified, experienced attorney, or, you know, there's going to be a lot of legal resources available to people to make sure that they assess their eligibility for these programs before they go ahead and apply. Um, but I think it can really benefit a lot of people. We, we just want to make sure that people are getting the screening that they need in order to make sure that this is um, the appropriate move for them. And so that's for people who are spouses of US citizens. What about the second part of the policy that President Biden unveiled today relating to those on DACA? How will they benefit? Is that a narrow reach or a broad one? I guess, first off, we don't have all the details about these particular programs. We have, you know, some details that so we'll get more details in the coming weeks and months. But in relation to the second group of people, the president has acknowledged, um, you know, the benefit in keeping people who are educated in the U.S. here in the U.S. So from what we've seen, it will apply to people who have DACA and maybe other people who could have applied for DACA had that program not been blocked. So it's for those people who have a U.S. college education and who also have an employer that is willing to sponsor them for a work related visa. And again, were it not for this kind of procedural thing in the law where they have to leave and then they trigger a bar, you know, these these procedural hurdles prevent people from accessing options that other people can apply for. So I think the idea is that it will benefit those people. And I, I think a lot of people will agree that keeping educated, you know, hardworking people in the US is going to be a good thing. And I'm excited about the opportunity that it opens up you know, to them, to their employers, their families as well. And Fiona, just briefly, we know how polarised immigration is in this country right now. Could the policies that President Biden has unveiled here be reversed by another president in the future? So, I mean, I think, first off, it's so unfair that people's lives are being used as like political pawns back and forth between one administration to the next. And really what we need is for Congress to pass some comprehensive immigration reform and address some of these things so that people are not left in limbo wondering what's going to happen from one administration to the next. I mean, from what we know in relation to, you know, the parole in place and some of these other waivers, if they are granted and received, 
um, it's unlikely that they could be reversed from a, you know, by a, a subsequent administration. Um, but, we, you know, who knows if they're pending, what might happen? We obviously have seen what has happened with DACA. And it's really important that we remember these are human beings lives that are at stake. And this back and forth and this roller coaster is truly not fair. Um, and so just to know how all these, you know, changes are impacting people and their families. And there's U.S. citizen children whose parents have DACA and are in this limbo. And so I hope that we get some permanent fixes in the law. And um, for now, we're, this is a welcome change.